This video explains how to set up the development environment for Big Data on Windows 10. This involves installing Oracle GDK 8, Apache Maven, and IntelliJ. The first step is to install Oracle GDK 8. While there are newer versions of GDK, we will use Oracle GDK 8 since it best supports most Big Data systems such as Hadoop and Spark. First, go to Oracle GDK download page and scroll down to the right operating system and click download. You will need to create a free Oracle account if you don't have one and log in to access the download. Once the download completes, you can follow the installation wizard and accept all the default options. Note where GDK is downloaded since we will need this shortly. At this point, the GDK has been successfully installed, but we are not quite done yet. We need to make sure that J the Java compiler is accessible from command line. To do that, we will add two environment variables. The first one is Java home, which points to the GDK installation path. The second one is the path environment variable, and we will edit it to add the bin directory of the GDK in the execution paths. Once this is done, you can open a new command window and you'll be able to access the Java compiler and the Java runtime environment. The next step is to install Apache Maven, which is a widely used project management tool for Java. Go to maven.apache.org and choose download. Choose the binary package of the latest version. Once the, the download is complete, you just need to extract it to any folder. I like to create an application folder under my home directory to put all the downloaded software. Like we did with GDK, we will add the bin directory of Maven to the path environment variable to make it accessible from command line. With GDK and Maven installed, you can now create your first project from command line. For that, I like to create a workspace directory under my home directory to place all projects. Open a command window in your workspace directory and run this Maven command. Now let's look closely at this command. Archetype generate means that we are generating a new project. Group ID is like your personal home page or workspace where you place all your projects and it follows a reverse domain, domain name, which is a standard Java naming convention for packages. Make sure to replace UCRnet ID with your actual UCRnet ID to ensure that you have a unique group ID. The artifact ID is the name of these projects. So in this case, we're just gonna call it test projects. Archetype artifact ID is the template project that you will generate. The quick start template contains a simple hello world project. Finally, the interactive mode false means that it will not prompt it for any information and will just take them from the command line. Once you hit enter, Maven will, do will download all the required packages and code template and create a project for you. This download happens only once uh, and then it is cached on your machine so the next time will just run much faster. Now let's take a look at the generated project. The pom.xml file contains the project configuration. The source directory contains all your source code. Inside source, there are two subdirectories, one for the main code and the other for test code, if you use unit testing for example. Under source, you will find a Java directory which includes all Java source code and there you will find a folder structure that follows your group ID and the generated main class which contains a simple hello world class. To compile and run this code from command line, go back to the terminal window and type mvn package. This will compile and test your code and then will package your code into a runnable jar file. It will take some time the first time you run it because it will have to download all the required packages, but these are again cached on your device so that next time it will run much faster. Once you see the success message, you can now run the generated jar file using the following command. Make sure to replace UCRnet ID with your actual UCRnet ID. Of course, we will not always work from command line, so this part shows you how to install IntelliJ, which is an IDE for Java. Download the free community version as a compressed package. And once it is downloaded, extract it again in your application directory. Run the bin slash IDS64 uh, executable, which will guide you through the setup process for the first time you run it. 
There are many plugins that can be installed, but we'll go with the minimum uh, that we will need throughout this course. But feel free to install more packages if you would like. Once IntelliJ starts, you can now import the Maven project that we created earlier using command line. IntelliJ is well integrated with Maven and will automatically figure out the project structure. Now navigate to the app class, which contains the main uh, function. And if you see a message at the top, click Setup SDK and uh, add the GDK that you installed, which is, which is 1.8. It might take some time the first time you add the SDK because it will have to index all the classes in the GDK, but this is a one-time job and will not have to would have to be done next time. Now you will see a green arrow or a green triangle uh, next to the main class and this will allow you to run the main class. Congratulations, you now have the development setup ready.